Hey there, welcome to Learn Guitar with Drew. Today we're going to investigate what are guide tones. Here we go. So in the intro, I was playing standard rhythm changes. I did one, six, two, five, three, six, two, five, one in the key of C. I played major, minor, and dominant chords, which is what these kind of jazz chords, these seventh chords are based upon. I also played some nines and some thirteens and some altered tones, like a flat nine or something. But basically playing through these jazz changes with these jazz chords, which are seventh chords, major, minor, and dominant. So let's take a look at how this works. The simplest way we can do this is a two, five, one progression. So if the one chord is C major seven, and the two chord is D minor seven, and the five chord is G seven, I can go two, five, one. So you've heard that progression a million times. I think a Maroon 5 song is just jumping out of me right now. It's, it's very standard changes and we've heard them forever. The way it works is like this. This is my D minor seven chord. D is my root, right? This C note is gonna be the flat seven. And then this F note is gonna be the flat third. So that's the seventh and that's the third. Now when I go to this G seven chord, this is my third, that's a B, and that's my seven. That's gonna be this F note. So you can see, see that movement right there? If we go to the C major 7 chord next, the B note is my 7 and the E note is my 3rd. So the dominant chord is a major 3rd with a flat 7. If we flat the 3rd, we get a minor 7. But if we raise the 7, we get a major 7. So you can see the dominant chord is kind of right in the middle. Dominant is major 3rd with flat 7. Minor 7 is a flat 3rd and a flat 7. And the major 7th chord has a major 3rd with a major 7. So here we go. If we look at this, you can see the progression there. Those are your guide tones. Now what's really, really amazing about this is when you move through the guide tones, the third becomes the seventh and the seventh becomes the third. This is also true with the blues too. We can do it with just dominant chords chromatically. Take a look at this lesson right here on the channel after you're done with this one, and you can see how these guide tones work with the blues. It's really amazing you can play the blues with only six notes. It's super cool to take a look at that video on how to play the blues with guide tones. So here's my seventh and that's my third. When I move down to G7, that is now my third and that's my seventh. So they kind of flipped around. And then here, that's my seven for the C chord and that's my third. So you can see the seventh becomes the third becomes the seventh. The third becomes the seventh becomes the third. Okay, so that's really kind of amazing. When you move down, the third becomes the seventh, and then the seventh becomes the third, and they just move like that through the changes. There's a lot of value in this. You can see it's kind of like the DNA of the chord. It's the strand of the DNA that gives these chords their, their functionality. There's a lesson on the channel right here about what a key of music is. It happens to be the key of C as well. That will explain how the harmonized scale works, the function of the chords, which ones are major and which ones are minor, and how all that works. So if you don't know that yet, uh, check out this video here. That will help to explain what's going on with this one. So now if I go two, five, one, I can key these notes and you can hear the song moving through that. You can hear the functionality of those chords. So back to the beginning of the intro when I was playing. If we use these voicings, you might see it even better. Here's an E minor seven chord. That's the three chord in the key of C. If we do this voicing like this, okay, that's the root, that's the third, and that's the seventh. Right? To go to A minor 7, I'm going to go like this. So what happened was this. You hear that movement? This note 
remain to be the same. It's it's stagnant. But the thirds and the sevenths are swapping again. That's the third, that's the seventh. Now that's the seventh and that's the third of this chord. Third, seventh, seventh, third. That's incredible. Now D minor seven, same voicing. Third, seventh for G seven, seventh, third. So you can hear this. C major 9 like that. 3rd, 7th, 7th, 3rd, 3rd, 7th, 7th, 3rd, 3rd, 7th. There's even a better way to do this with something called tritone substitution. Here's a lesson on the channel right here on how that works. We can also take our major, minor, and dominant chords and make them all dominant, which makes the voice leading chromatic with the guy tones. They all become tritones. That's also super cool. Here's a video on the channel right here on how to do that. If you're enjoying today's lesson on what are guide tones, please hit that subscribe button and click the bell for notifications. And in the comments section down below, you'll find links to my websites and other guitar resources. So now if I play through these changes, this. So I can play a line through this and kind of bebop by accenting those guy tones like this. It's a very obvious sounding line. I probably wouldn't do exactly that. It sounds almost kind of campy, but if I go like this. Spice it up a little bit. guide tones to play through the chord changes. There's a lesson on the channel right here on how to start playing through rhythm changes by doing exactly what I did right there. That could be helpful as well. So hopefully this lesson was helpful to understand what guide tones are. You can use these with your soloing or with your comping. You can feature those notes with your soloing. You can play just those notes with your comping to go through the chord changes. It's really neat to see how the DNA kind of the thread runs through the entire progression. It's amazing how it works. Okay, thank you so much. I'll see you in the next lesson.